For over 400 years, Saturn's majestic rings and colorful clouds have captivated stargazers worldwide. Ancient cultures wove stories about this wandering light, yet its true nature remained shrouded in mystery. That is, until the arrival of Cassini, Huygens, after a seven-year trek across the solar system, this daring robotic duo pulled back Saturn's veil. What was revealed over the next quarter century fundamentally changed our understanding of the ringed planet and its moons. Icy fountains hint at hidden oceans. Brilliant auroras pulse with Saturn's secret rhythms. Even a moon called Titan hides earthly lakes and seas on its alien surface. Saturn is by far one of the oldest celestial observations that humanity has ever managed to see in the night sky. Observations of Saturn can be dated back to the ancient Babylonian astronomers who systematically studied and recorded its movements. Later, the ancient Greeks named the planet Phanon after one of their titans, Cronus, the god of the sky. Eventually, the Romans, who were notoriously known to borrow ideas from the ancient Greeks, named the planet star of Saturn Cronus's equivalent. What's even more fascinating about Saturn is that the planet has been depicted in ancient cultures across the globe. In Hindu astrology, there are nine astrological objects called Navagrahas. Saturn, commonly referred to as Shani, a divine entity that judges individuals based on their actions in life, both good and bad. Ancient Chinese and Japanese culture considered the planet Saturn to be the Earth star. This was based on the five elements, which were used to classify natural elements. Hebrew, Ottoman, Arabic, Urdu, and even Malay cultures have depicted Saturn in various religious form. Christian Huygens observed Saturn through a telescope in 1659 and proved that there was a planet within those rings, while also discovering Saturn's moon, Titan. Later on, Giovanni Domenico Cassini found four more moons, Apatis, Rhea, Tethys, and Diana. In 1675, Cassini spotted a gap in the rings, which we now call the Cassini Division. These discoveries were crucial in the understanding of Saturn. Jump to more than 300 years later, in 1997, the Cassini-Huygens missions launched with the primary purpose of orbiting Saturn in all its wonder. These missions would make Huygens and Cassini really proud because they've sent back over 450,000 images of Saturn and its orbiting moons, amounting to 635 gigabytes of data from which six new moons were discovered along with observations of subsurface oceans and its icy moons, and over 4,000. Scientific papers have been published from that data. It even dropped a probe on Titan and orbited the planet 294 times amounting to 4.9 billion miles or 7.9 billion kilometers. It is, unsurprisingly, one of the greatest space missions to date. This is the story of Cassini and Huygens' grand tour of the Saturn system, from its launch in 1997 to the mission's epic finale 20 years later. Join us as we unveil the hard-won secrets of Saturn, uncovered one astonishing image at a time. The Cassini-Huygens mission was a joint venture between NASA the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency to explore Saturn and its surroundings. Cassini was the main orbiter spacecraft named after astronomers Giovanni Cassini. Huygens, obviously named for Christian Huygens, was a lander probe designed to touch down on Saturn's largest moon, Titan. The mission aimed to acquire further knowledge regarding Saturn's rings, moons, and the planet itself. Cassini was launched on October 15, 1997, and was active in space for nearly 20 years. After entering Saturn's orbit on July 1, 2004, it spent 13 years circling the planet and studying its inner workings, gaining an in-depth understanding of the planet and its system. The journey to Saturn included flybys of Venus, Earth, the asteroid 2685 Majerski, and Jupiter. The mission concluded on September 15, 2017, when Cassini was directed into Saturn's upper atmosphere to burn up. This was done to prevent any potential contamination of Saturn's moons with microbes from Earth. The accomplishment of the mission exceeded all expectations. Jim Green, NASA's Planetary Science Division director, described Cassini-Huygens as a groundbreaking mission. 
that greatly expanded our understanding of Saturn's system, its rings, moons, and the possibilities for life within our solar system. Originally planned for four years, the mission was extended twice. There was a final extension known as the Cassini Solstice mission, which ended in September 2017. The Huygens module traveled with Cassini until it separated from the probe on December 25, 2004, successfully landing on Titan on January 14, 2005. The mission's final phase saw Cassini bravely traverse the narrow gap between Saturn and its innermost rings, completing its grand finale. The goal was to maximize the scientific discoveries before the spacecraft was deliberately lowered into orbit to burn up in Saturn's upper atmosphere. This deliberate destruction prevented any unintended contamination of Saturn's moons. The mission ended when it entered Saturn's atmosphere, but the data collected will continue to be analyzed for years. During its mission, the Cassini probe made significant contributions to the discovery of Saturn's moons, identifying seven previously unknown moons. The imaging efforts of the spacecraft led to the identification of methone, polony, and polydeuces in 2004. Cassini's ongoing exploration led to another discovery on May 1, 2005, when a new moon was detected within the Keeler Gap. That moon was named Daphnis. The fifth discovered moon was revealed on May 30, 2007, and named Antha. Cassini continued unveiling new moons around Saturn. On February 3, 2009, it discovered a sixth moon nestled within Saturn's G-ring named Aegean. Measuring just 0.3 miles or 500 meters wide, Aegean resides in the densest part of Saturn's rings. Later that year, on November 2nd, Cassini spotted a seventh new moon, designated S2009-S1. This small moon, approximately 1,000 feet or 300 meters wide, orbits amidst Saturn's B brink. Thanks to Cassini's capable instruments, scientists reported evidence of an additional moon candidate in Saturn's A-ring in April 2014. The craft's prolific moon discoveries added to our understanding of Saturn's intriguing ring moon system. In June 2004, Cassini scientists aimed to precisely measure Saturn's rotation rate. Without fixed surface landmarks, they utilized radio signals to time Saturn's spin. The results aligned with past Earth observations, but revealed a puzzling change. Saturn's day lengthened by about six minutes since Voyager 1's flyby in 1980. This was not caused by a slowing of Saturn's overall rotation. Rather, fluctuations in its atmosphere and magnetic field periodically alter the precise rotation rate. In 2019, Cassini research unlocked the mystery, studying vibrations within Saturn that cause its gravity field to wobble. Scientists modeled the planet's interior and calculated its true rotation period is 10 hours, 33 minutes, and 38 seconds. The ring particles absorb this energy at specific points where it builds up until it's thrown into a wave. By observing over 20 different vibrational waves, they derive the most accurate measurement yet for the planet's complex rotational behavior. On July 1, 2004, Cassini finally arrived at Saturn after a seven-year trek. The spacecraft threaded the gap between the F and G rings, becoming the first ever to achieve orbit. Entering orbit was an intricate maneuver. As Cassini approached, it rotated its antenna away to shield its instruments from ring particles. Then, passing through the ring plane, it turned again to position its engine towards Saturn. Firing at precisely the right moment, the engine slowed Cassini enough for Saturn's gravity to capture it into orbit. It was a harrowing orbital insertion that brought Cassini remarkably close to Saturn's cloud tops on June 30th. On June 11, 2004, Cassini flew close to Saturn's moon Phoebe. This was the first time we could really study Phoebe up close. Before, Voyager 2 had just passed by from far away in 1981 and didn't get detailed pictures. This was Cassini's only chance to get near Phoebe because of Saturn's orbit. We got the first close-up pictures, and scientists immediately noticed that Phoebe's surface looked different from the other asteroids they had seen. Some parts of the surface were very bright in the pictures, and they believe that there may be a lot of water ice below the surface. On July 2, 2004, Cassini flew by Saturn's biggest moon, Titan, for the first time. It got really close, about 211,000 miles away from Titan, 
The camera had special filters that helped see through Titan's hazy air and showed clouds at the South Pole made of methane. The surface had different brightness levels. On October 27, 2004, Cassini performed another close flyby, reaching a distance of only 750 miles above Titan. It collected almost 4 gigabits of data and returned it to Earth. We obtained the first radar images of Titan's surface through its hazy atmosphere. It looked fairly flat, with the highest points only about 160 feet above the lowest point. These new images from here were much better than previous flybys. They were up to 100 times clearer on Titan. The pictures showed lakes of methane that looked similar to the water lakes on Earth. On December 25, 2004, Cassini released a probe called Huygens onto Titan. It used springs and spiral rails to spin for stability. Huygens entered Titan's atmosphere on January 14, 2005, and after approximately two and a half hours, it landed on the ground. Cassini sent back 350 pictures Huygens took during its descent and landing. On July 21, 2006, Radar images were taken that appear to reveal lakes of liquid hydrocarbons like methane and ethane in the northern parts of Titan. This is a big deal because it was the first time we found lakes of liquid on another planet or moon. These lakes are different in size, ranging from just one kilometer to as big as 100 kilometers across. Then, on March 13, 2007, scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory shared some strong evidence they found signs of large pools of methane and ethane, similar to seas in the northern part of Titan. One of these seas is even larger than any of the lakes in North America. During Cassini's close encounters with Enceladus in 2005, it made several intriguing discoveries. It noticed that the moon's magnetic field was changing, which could mean there might be a thin but important atmosphere. They also saw signs of ionized water vapor, like mist, around it. The spacecraft also witnessed a series of erupting fountains of icy water from its south pole, indicating that Enceladus may be delivering particles to Saturn's E-ring. Scientists started to think there could be pockets of liquid water near the surface that might be causing these eruptions. Then, on March 12, 2008, Cassini got even closer to Enceladus, coming within 31 miles or 50 kilometers of its surface. It flew through the plumes of the geysers and found water, carbon dioxide, and more. It also took pictures of parts that were hotter than their surroundings. On November 21, 2009, Cassini once again passed by Enceladus, this time coming within 1,600 kilometers of its surface. A special tool was used to create a map of heat coming from a specific part of the moon, the Baghdad Sulcate. This resulted in a thorough understanding of that particular region of the moon, Fast forward to April 3, 2014, about 10 years after Cassini got to Saturn, NASA revealed that they've uncovered evidence of a massive salted sea of liquid water within Enceladus. The water in this ocean touches the rocky region inside the moon, and researchers believe it's a great spot for tiny extraterrestrial life. In September 2015, NASA revealed that they used data from Cassini to figure out that Enceladus is not solidly connected to its core. This implies that there may be a substantial ocean beneath its surface, extending all around the moon. And on October 28, 2015, Cassini went super close to Enceladus again, coming within 49 kilometers or 30 miles of its surface and passing through the icy plume above the South Pole. We have an entire video talking about the wondrous moons of Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune, which you should definitely check out after you're done with this video. We'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's get back into it. On September 10, 2007, Cassini completed its visit to the unique moon called Iapetus. This moon has two different tones and looks somewhat like a walnut. Cassini took pictures from a distance of 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles above the surface. While sending these pictures to Earth, Cassini got hit by a cosmic ray, which caused it to go into safety mode for a little while. But don't worry, all the information from the visit to the moon was saved and collected. Starting in May 2005, Cassini began a series of special experiments using radio waves. These experiments helped scientists learn about the size of particles in Saturn's rings and also about the atmosphere of Saturn itself. Cassini followed specific paths for more than four months to do these experiments. 
During this period, it flew behind the flat area where Saturn's rings are when seen from Earth. It transmitted radio waves through the particles in the rings. The scientists on Earth then examined the radio signals that returned, examining things like the frequency, phase, and power fluctuations in the signal. Using this information, they figured out how the rings were made. In pictures taken on September 5, 2005, Cassini spotted something interesting in Saturn's rings. These were spokes on its rings, previously seen only by the visual observer Stephen James O'Mara in 1977, and then confirmed by the Voyager space probes in the early 1980s. Cassini's success led to extended mission funding beyond the initial four years. In April 2008, NASA granted a 27-month extension to continue exploring Saturn and its moons, dubbed the Equinox mission. Cassini performed 60 more orbits from 2008 to 2010. These included targeted flybys of Titan, Enceladus, Mimas, Tethys, DNA, Rhea, and Helene. Based on this ongoing science return, NASA approved another seven-year extension in February 2010. The Solstice mission from 2010 to 2017, Cassini completed 155 additional orbits and 54 flybys of Titan along with 11 more of Enceladus. The extended missions allowed detailed follow-up studies and new discoveries of Saturn's dynamic moons. Cassini observed the aftermath of a significant storm known as the Great White Spot on October 25, 2012, which is an event on Saturn that occurs roughly every 30 years. The data obtained from Cassini's instruments revealed a potent ejection from the storm resulting in a temperature rise of 83 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit above the usual level in Saturn's stratosphere. This storm also resulted in the detection of a substantial increase in ethylene gas, which is unusual for Saturn and is produced both naturally and artificially on Earth. On December 5, 2010, Cassini detected something extraordinary developing in Saturn's northern hemisphere, the birth of a giant storm. As the first orbiting spacecraft at Saturn, Cassini had a front row seat to observe the storm's progress using infrared light. This allowed it to see aspects of Saturn's atmosphere impossible to view with visible light, like temperature variations. Over the next months, Cassini monitored the storm's evolution in ways no human eyes ever could, fundamentally changing our understanding of Saturn's weather. The ethylene gas concentrations resulting from this storm were significantly higher than previously believed possible on Saturn. Scientists determined that this storm was the largest and hottest stratospheric vortex ever observed within the solar system. During its initial stage, it even exceeded the size of Jupiter's renowned Great Red Spot. On July 19, 2013, the spacecraft turned its gaze towards Earth and captured an outstanding image of our planet and the moon. This was part of a special photo session to capture the whole Saturn system in natural light. What made this event even more special was that NASA had already informed the public that this long distance snapshot was going to happen. The team behind the images wanted everyone on Earth to wave and smile towards the sky. Carolyn Porco, one of the scientists on the Cassini team, said that this moment was a chance for us all to celebrate life on our pale blue dot. On February 10th, 2015, Cassini got close to Saturn's moon, Rhea, coming just 47,000 kilometers or 29,000 miles away from it. The spacecraft's cameras captured some of the clearest and most colorful pictures of Rhea ever. Cassini continued its journey, and on May 31st, 2015, it had a close encounter with Saturn's moon Hyperion, from a distance of about 34,000 kilometers or 21,000 miles. Another moon, DNA, also got a visit from Cassini on August 17, 2015, when the spacecraft passed by at a distance of about 475 kilometers or 295 miles. Cassini had briefly visited DNA before, a couple of months earlier. As Cassini's fuel stores diminished, Mission planners designed an audacious final chapter to protect Saturn's potentially habitable moons. Cassini would dive between Saturn and its innermost rings over 20 times, skimming the planet's outer atmosphere. This allowed close-up observations of Saturn's atmosphere and poles, while minimizing any chance of Cassini colliding with and contaminating a potentially life-bearing moon. In 2014, 
There was some controversy regarding the government funding for this grand ending. The grand finale was like having two different missions of the Discovery Program class, separate from Cassini's main mission. In late 2014, the U.S. government granted permission for the grand finale, which cost $200 million. This proved to be much more cost-effective than the creation of two new probes under separate Discovery class missions. In November 2016, Cassini flew by Titan and changed its route to go between Saturn and its inner ring. This was the beginning of the grand final phase. Cassini soared in close proximity to Saturn's cloud layer, capturing awe-inspiring images of its atmosphere. It did this 22 times, each bringing Cassini closer to Saturn, before making its last dive into the atmosphere on September 15, 2017. Within a minute, the extreme environment overwhelmed and vaporized the spacecraft. A much-deserved accolade for NASA, as the Space Organization received an Emmy Award for Outstanding Original Interactive Program for its presentation of the Cassini mission's grand finale at Saturn in September 2018. NASA is still interested in exploring Saturn as part of its New Frontiers program. A mission called Dragonfly is being considered for missions to Saturn that could involve sending a probe into Saturn's atmosphere and investigating the potential for life on its moons Titan and Enceladus. The Dragonfly spacecraft is set to launch in 2027 and land on Saturn's moon Titan. Another proposed mission, the Europa-Jupiter system mission, has also been given priority. China's CNSA has plans for two spacecraft, the Interstellar Express, which could fly by Saturn in 2024. While we wait for more incredible missions to Saturn and its numerous moons, we can only be grateful for the epic journey that Cassini, Huygens missions were designed for, and the researchers and scientists behind it. Its data and images of this beautiful planet will be showcased and studied for years to come. What do you think? Is there a possibility of life on Saturn's moons? And when do you think we'll be able to send manned missions to Titan or Enceladus? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video, and as always, thanks for watching.